Okay, now that we have the server set up, we need to actually make it work and return the data. So, um, that will come from the one minute data, which is here. Um, I think I might change the name of these. I think I'm going to call this minute data and then like minute data compressed. Maybe. Yeah. I think I'll have a subfolder. So let me do that really quick. Because I don't want to, it's not really, well, let me think about this. Minute data. Misc other temp data. Actually, this is fine for temp data because I'm never going to use this actual data. Um, I just want this to be Yeah, let me think about this. Minute data. Data dir. Util. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm going to throw the minute data in bars. That's right. Okay. Let's see that. So let's say this is one minute instead of 15 and or how's this going to work i think this is fine right Um, let me look at the util, or no, is it in the data? Get calc bars, that's in util. Get minute data. Ticker close. All right, I'm gonna rearrange this so these match up. Calc data df equals calc data df. And the output looks like Timestamp ticker close. Let's do that. Let's run Python uh, scanner. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's better. And then, basically before it um, resamples, I just want to save that. So let's see, minute data df. 
Um, let's just save it first, see what it looks like. 2CSV, join. Calcum bars, dir. What's calc bars, dir? Where was that? Calc bars, dir. Um. Yeah, let's say uh let's think about this for a minute. Net data. Hmm. Conk bars or say minute bars. Minute bars dir is that and then I'll throw it here. Um, minute bars, dir, date, yeah, I only want to do that during testing though, so where is this, get conk bars, well, Init scanner. Is testing. If is testing. Else. Um, if it's testing, otherwise none. I think that's how I'm going to arrange it for now. Calpars, Um, if minute bars, dir. Then do it. Calc bars, dir, minute bars, dir, date, CSV, minute, data, DF. All right, cool. Let's try that, see what happens. What happened? Why does that not happen? Print test one. It's not getting there. Minute bars dir. Did I not have testing? Uh, scanner. Testing's true. Okay. Minute data. For date and calcars dates print date or no let's do this uh, 
Right, should I not be seeing this? Data bars one minute. Okay. And then in here, minute bars dir. Oh, right. Oh, crap. Um, actually, that's fine. This won't exist. That's why it wasn't working. Okay. Um, there's no timestamp. The heck? What? Hmm. Um, print minute data df dot columns. Not sure. Calls. Well, that should be. No, it shouldn't be there. I have to delete these. Ticker. Window start. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. I'm assuming it's sorted, which it is, but interesting. Okay. Ticker, volume, open, high, low, close, window, start, transactions. It's from here. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Let's go back to this. I'm going to need to basically do this. Until... Um, timestamp, and then, um, yeah, let's see, so there's that. Minute data DF timestamp is that and that. Then we only want those three things. Um so I actually want to Do this first. So timestamp ticker close like that, and then here I want open high low close. Do I care about these? What do we have in volume? I don't know. 
So the minute data DF has those, the this one does not. Let's we'll see what happens. What does this look like currently? Okay. So it has timestamp, ticker, open, high, low, close. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Very nice. All right. And then time stamp ticker close. Do we want open for the opening bar? I'm trying to think. Um, and I think I'm doing this twice because of the way it rearranges. Um, after you do the group by and reset index. I technically don't need to do it here, but why not? Um, I was trying to think if I want to open or not. The high and the low I don't care about. The open would only be for the opening candle. Let's just throw it in there. Why not? It won't hurt. Ah. Get rid of these. Open not found. What? Where? Which line? 83. No. Um... Data. Oh, here it is, 129. Open up, found. Oh, right. There we go. I don't think this is going to work right. Timestamp, ticker, open, close. Okay. Yeah, and these generally match. Okay. And then... Um, what now? Init scanner. So back to the rest server. So the rest server basically needs to take this and I want it to read from the minute data.
Uh, let's see how fast that is. Let me think about this. Um, really that should be loaded ahead of time, so definitely don't want to load it every time it makes a request. So this is going to need the config stuff. Um, let's see here. Uh, rest server. Scanner config. It's kind of becoming a mess. That's okay. Import JSON scanner config. Calculation days back. Don't care about that. I really just care about the start time. Or start date. Um, data date. So if you try to request a date that's not the current date, it's not going to work. But that's fine. Um, because I'm only going to load in the data from that date. Um, yeah, it's just, eh, it's fine. So data, yeah, I'll just say sim start date. It's fine. Um, and then from, or no, import pandas as PD and PD dot read CSV um, let's go ahead and grab this rest server Import OS. Don't need. Oh yeah, this is fine. Uh, minute bars dir. And this is fine. PD dot read. So let's say data df is none. Yes. Yeah, I'll say none. Have it crash. If it doesn't work, and then uh, os dot path dot join. This is gonna be this and sim start date uh, dot csv like that f string pd read csv the idea of sim start date csv Minute bars, dir sim start date, okay. And 
what I'm going to do is just test this really quick. So print data df head two first two rows. So let's run this thing. No issues so far, which is good. And then make a request and it logs the first two rows. Perfect. Okay. Uh, instead of doing that though, let's say um, I basically need time string yeah so um i have that in here mark it open time so i need a thing like this basically that will put this in here as an example greater than, so it's going to be less than or equal to market open timestamp. I don't know how that works with stocks that don't trade every minute. I'm assuming it the 15 minute close, yeah, it would just be, yeah, but they, there's, it's really no stocks that take, have longer than 15 minute intervals, so, between trades, I don't think, there's at least one, right, so, I was just thinking, like, the close of a 15 minute bar is, yeah, just the close in that time. It could have been from 30 minutes ago. The last trade, right? Okay, so that's fine. So it's going to be less than or equal to the market open timestamp, which is not true. It's going to be this time string. Um, I need to get the market open timestamp. Time stamp equals td dot timestamp um time string oops what did I just do Okay, less than or equal to timestamp. Uh, that's it for that. Don't need these parentheses. At all, right? Say results df is that move this below and move this below all this. Okay, timestamp is that. Um, I'll say this is request timestamp. Request timestamp. Yeah, and the reason I need this is because 
basically I need to simulate it happening happening every minute. It'll get the newest close, but I can't do that um, without giving it a time because it doesn't know where to look. So it's the one part where it's not going to be the actual one-to-one -one mock, as far as I know. Um, result DF is data DF. Timestamp DT is less than or equal to. Okay, and then you just want. Uh, let's see here. You want four each. You basically just want the latest of each one. Um, I think you just do sort by. And then remove duplicates is one way to do it. Result df equals result df dot sort values by um, timestamp. And then result df equals drop duplicates and then subset uh, ticker. I think that's how I want to do it. And this will be ascending false, right? Um, and then result of dot two CSV test five hundred CSV index is false. Okay, let's see here. Um, also to sort, I need to do, where is it, uh, New York, what, basically this. That's the one disadvantage, or one of the disadvantages of using CSVs. You always have to do this. Um, when reading it back in, you have to convert it back to dates. There's a thing that says um, parse dates. It's like a parameter, but I, for some reason, I couldn't figure out how to get that to work, but I'll look back into that later. I'm just not doing it right. Um, where's data df? Data df. Um, this is actually going to be timestamp. It's going to be milliseconds, not nanoseconds. And I like that. Okay, let's try this. Non convertible value. with the unit milliseconds. Oh, true. Don't need that. Um, don't need this either. It's already in uh, New York. Actually, I don't need any of this. There we go. Okay, let's make a request. And we get an error. What's the error? What? Unknown string format. Cannot convert string. Oh, <laughs> duh. 
Um, I actually do need a timestamp. 09, 30, 00, or let's say 32, 00. And that's supposed to be saving a file. So yeah, it gets 32. And it gets, yeah, that row. Very nice. I think that's working. Let's make sure it is. Um, 189738 for Apple, uh, 18985, 18967, dang it, closed it, 18972, yep, and Microsoft 421.38. Um, four twenty one seven fifty five. Four twenty one thirteen. Nice. All right. Okay. And now I need to return this format. From there, um, I'm not going to worry about VW, volume I have, timestamp, okay, um, hmm. That's kind of annoying. Anyways, all right, let's do that. So it's going to be, uh, I'm not going to worry about those params. I'll just, I'll just worry about results. So it's an object with results, which is an array. Okay, so an object I'm trying to think how I want to do the um hmm. Let me see something really quick. Um, what would that be under? Uh, hopefully these are real times. Do I have? I don't know. I could just I could just grab that right. Hold on, where's my daily data, test data? Where's the thing that gets the trading dates? Is that in a knit? Or no, that's in util. Get trading dates. Um, Yeah, 
tax ticker one day. Here, I'm going to just make a request off screen in incognito with the uh, with the API key. I just want to see if um, I want to see if how exactly those timestamps are uh, matching up, basically. So I want group daily. Um, that date's fine. Include OTC false. So I'm going to grab that. Doing this off screen. So I grab this query. I'm just going to plug the API key in, which is. Also off screen, give me just a minute. Um, do I have a stock? No, I don't know a stock. Okay. All right, I can bring this back over, I think. So there's that. Let me close this. All right, so I just want to see these Unix timestamp. Uh, well, a lot of these tickers trade very little, huh? Actually, confused. AAPL. Oh, right. Okay. Duh. This is group daily. Never mind. I was thinking something else. But that's... 1400 I guess the point is no I'm gonna have to look up an individual stock on the minute bars aggregates one minute oh nine we'll do the same date on both of these Adjusted, true, sorted, whatever. I'll limit that. Copy this. Copied into here. Grab the API key. Um, got that. Paste in. Remove it. Okay. Basically, um, I just want to see if these are like where these start. And if I could use Windows Start for that. So 930, 248. I want to find the open of this day. Should be six thirty, seven thirty, seven twenty nine. I guess I could look at the volume. Uh, the volume really picks up. Yeah, right, right around here. Yeah, and this is the most volume, so this makes sense. This is 7.30, so this is the open. Yeah, 7.30. And it's how many seconds? Oh, it's 37 seconds. Or no, what is that? That's something else. Yeah, 7.31, no seconds. Okay. 
So it's the beginning, yeah. That's what I figured. Okay, so we can use the window start. It's perfect. All right. Um, coming back to this. Let me check one thing really quick. Okay, that's good. All right. Um, <clears throat> window start. So for... I basically have this. And I want to do... Uh, milliseconds to, or no, nanoseconds to milliseconds conversion. Divide the time by a million. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. So, this is pretty easy now. Um, close this, close this, close this. Where are we at here? Is it in REST server? No, it's in um, whatever creates these, which is init, not init, util. Okay, so that would be yeah, I'm just trying to think. Okay, so minute data df is Unix timestamp um, in milliseconds equals minute data df window start divided by a million. Okay, I think this will work. Let's go ahead and delete these um timestamp unix timestamp actually I'll lead with this There we go. Okay. So this should look the same. Cool. And this should now have that. Great. And this should be, if I go back here, Unix timestamp 630. Nice. All right. That's great. And this is what, 631? Yes, it is. Perfect. All right, um, let me just ask ChatGBT. I tried as type int and it didn't do anything. I have a DF column with values like this, how to remove the dot zero part. As type, I tried that. 
Did I not? Hold on, let me just double check. Maybe I did it wrong. Let me do it again. Yeah, it does that. Did I figure this out before? I swear I was dealing with negative numbers and I realized what I was doing wrong. In 64, that's it? Okay. Let me see, let's type, am I doing it somewhere else? Sixty-four. What? Is that how to do it? Yes. Okay. Let's try that again. Nice. That was easy. All right. Um, let's double check it. Six thirty. Six thirty one. Perfect. All right. Now. I want to ask something. Uh, is this okay, or should I be? Should I have something like is not none instead? Okay. Or is none, I mean not is not none. Okay. I think it's okay if you know what you're doing in general. The zero though is kinda of throws you off sometimes. Gotta be careful about that one. Um What was I doing? Oh, the return. Okay, so this column is called Unix timestamp MS. So now that I have a data frame in REST server here, I need to. Let me print it again. Print result df. Make a request. Oh crap. Got rid of the uh, what I had in there. Okay, stocks. Oh, here it is. Okay, so. Basically, I want to rename these columns as one step. Uh, 
Um, I also want to do if I have a DF and I want turn it into a list of objects or dictionaries where each key is a column and each value is the row value for that column. Didn't explain it perfectly, so I'm going to make that clear. Uh, just two dict orient records. Okay, that's easy. Um, okay. Result df two dict orient records. Of course, I need to rename the uh, columns. Well, let's start with that. Get rid of this. Make another request. An integer is required. What? What's the problem? Alright, I guess... What did I have before? Here, let's see response JSON is that. Let's do that for a moment. Print. Let's try that. Uh, well, let's get rid of timestamp. I think it's throwing things off. Um, let's do copy and then result df. Try that. Cool. And we want to rename. Rename. Columns. Um. Unix timestamp is basically just got to use this over here. This stuff, I'll grab it. Rename that. To, uh, that would be T, rename, let's do it in order, 
but they have it. Um, ticker T. Um, close C I H well why do they have it in this order <laughs> uh, close high low low L um and I'll have to figure out O is uh No, sorry, open is O. Since it's a mock, I need to do this basically. Uh, where are we at? Open T. Volume is B, and then all I need is N and VW. I really don't need those. Um, but since that's how it's going to come through, I'll just do it N and VW. So let's do results DF. N equals one result DF VW equals one and then result DF equals result DF. Do it in the same order. So we have T C H L N O T V V W. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. Make a request. Looks pretty good. Okay, and let's see if this works. Very nice. Um, not quite though. So let's see. I guess I can do query count. So none of this is a big deal. Let's see. Is that giving me back what I want though? Hold on. Yeah. Results count, query count. What is query count? I don't understand that. I'll just make those the same. I don't really need to do, um, here, let's say results, based on, I don't really need to make this exactly the same, but I might as well, why not, it won't hurt, so we have adjusted, it's going to be, Adjusted. We have query count 
is uh, results length. I'll create that variable in a minute. Results is going to be results JSON. And then the next thing would be results count. Is also results length and status is always going to be okay for this. Okay, and then uh, results length. Length result df. Perfect. See how that looks. Now we get it pretty much back uh, how they would give it to us, I think. We've adjusted query count two results is that results count none of these I'm gonna even use so it doesn't matter but yeah perfect all right is there anything else we need to do here for this um I do want to have. You think about this. Init data. Yeah, so scanner. Scanner, I don't want it to. I actually don't want scanner to init the data at all. I've been thinking about this. Do I? I just want it all ready ahead of time. You know what? I want either the REST server or the WebSocket server to init the data because, yeah. Those need to be running first and then this thing can run whenever it wants. With the WebSocket server, Is that always doing something? Yeah, run every second. Yeah. Just trying to think how I want to do this. I think I want the REST server to init the data. I don't want the scanner to do this at all. Because this is going to be a separate script. To be honest, this is pretty sloppy what I'm doing here. Um, and the REST server needs that data. I don't want to be able to start this independently of the REST server. Yeah. So that's the next step. Move all this init data stuff into either the REST server or the web server. No, I want the REST server because I can just start running. I'm going to put this in the notes. Start running REST mock REST server. Uh, 
this units the data all necessary data start running hmm I kind of want WebSocket server to run right when the scanner starts. I'm trying to think about this. Really quick, I'm going to save this. Cause this is pretty good for now. I'm not even using this. Eh, well, I'll just throw it in there. Get rid of that. Minute bars data. Alright, I, uh, I gotta go, I, um, all I'm gonna do is the git, uh, commit, but yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be back later, thanks for watching.